The Oakland County Campaign for Liberty spotlights each month real American heroes, people fighting for the rights of all Americans. This episode features noted gun rights advocate Rick Ector. Rick, what is the purpose of bump stock to have that? And what is the purpose of an assault rifle, an AR-15, for instance? What would be the reason someone should have that? Do tell Well, me. the Second Amendment says that you have the right to keep and bear a firearm. You don't need to demonstrate why you should have it. You should have it because you want to have it. it it's something that makes us uniquely American. You know, this country was founded on a gun, and we're always going to have guns. But what I'd like to invite star of stage, uh, star of, of, of uh, what's the name, uh, star of Let It Rip, and, and, and star of radio, the great Rick Ector. Rick, come on down and, and talk to us, please, sir. Hey, it's great to be here. I'm honored that I'm being offered an opportunity to talk about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that is, of course, guns and the right to own guns and gun rights. Uh, I'm here today to talk about a topic that really hasn't gotten a lot of uh, fanfare, a lot of media coverage here locally, because locally it hasn't been an issue yet. However, there are people and there are forces hard at work to make it an issue. I'm talking about the latest scourge to liberty and to gun rights that we are facing in this country today, and it's called red flag laws, okay? Red flag laws. They call it a red flag law, such as if you notice something that is wrong, it causes a red flag. And you know, when you see a red flag, you're like, okay, this is obviously a problem and we need to do something about it. Well, this red flag, as they call it, is as it pertains to gun ownership and gun possession. Just yesterday, the state of Maryland became the 11th state in the United States to enact a red flag law. Well, what in the world is a red flag law? A red flag law is a law where if an individual believes that you are having some psychological, emotional issues that relate to you being unsafe with a gun, then you need to come under special scrutiny. And under this special scrutiny, certain actions can be taken against you and your rights to legally own and possess a gun. And as a gun rights advocate, you know, my ears are totally perked up when an individual is talking about violating my right to own and possess a firearm. The thing about these red flag laws is that they are the most draconian laws ever. If once you finally are introduced to the topic, I was first introduced to this topic earlier this year. I was invited to go on down to Fox 2 and talk about this new law that uh, State House Rep Robert Wittenberg was proposing. It was these red flag laws. And the way the advocates of these laws, they package these laws and the way that they present them to the public, it sounds reasonable. It sounds plausible. The idea is that some incident happened, something occurred, some red flag was raised where an individual whose actions that did not rise to the level of committing a crime, but he still bears further scrutiny and we believe that he's dangerous and this dangerous person hasn't done something yet. But until he does something, we need to punish him in the meantime. And you're like, well, gee, Rick, what in the world are you talking about? I'm talking about an individual levying an accusation against you saying that you are a threat to yourself or some other person. Okay, I got that. Usually, 
when people are under scrutiny by the law community for uh, having uh, committed a crime or are suspected of planning a crime, there are certain rights that are afforded to the accused. The most important right is the one that you're innocent until proven guilty. That whole concept known as due process. With these red flag laws, there's no such thing as due process. A mere allegation can trigger a sequence of events that will lead to you being immediately stripped of your right to legally own and possess a firearm. They're like, well, gee, Rick, tell me more. This sounds very heinous. And it is. It's awful and it's evil. For example, there are a lot of people for whatever reason who have issues with one another and one of the unfortunate consequences of being in our society sometimes people fall out and they no longer are as cordial and as friendly to one another and the most textbook incident I can think of is a marriage two people are joined together legally married and one person files for divorce and then all of a sudden you get the lawyers involved and then there's things such as allegations that cause one person to leave the home. It can snowball out of control. Well, this is kind of sort of what we're looking at with these red flag laws. If for whatever reason I don't like you or I have an issue with you, I can say that you are a menace. You are a danger to yourself. You are a danger to other people. And let's talk about what type of person can trigger this red flag law. The list is huge. The list of people who can levy an unfounded accusation against you. Man, I had to write it down. Listen to this long laundry list of people who can levy an accusation that you are a threat to yourself or other people. A parent, son, daughter, brother, sister, grandparent, uncle, aunt, first cousin, spouse, ex-spouse, someone who lives in the same household, ex-girlfriend, girlfriend, you had a dating relationship, you have a child in common, you have a former dating relationship, you used to share the same household, you share the same current household, your roommates, ex-roommates, you had a close relationship, and the list gets even longer. Now we start incorporating law enforcement, police officer, sheriff, deputy, state police officer, and any federal law enforcement agency. If any one of these people, who is basically everyone, levies a complaint, whether it is truthful or whether it is baseless, they can go start the proceedings to initiate an emergency procedure against you to strip you of your gun rights. Now, if the allegations are so salacious and so evil and so heinous, they will conduct this hearing in secrecy, in private. You will not even know that they're conducting this hearing in court regarding your Second Amendment right. Once they have decided that, yes, you should have your gun taken away from you without your ability to, to face your accusers and to offer your side of the story, they will then initiate a raid upon your house. They will literally come at three, four o'clock in the morning. They will barge into your home with the appropriate warrants and they will take all of your firearms and they will take them and they will secure them until at such point you you then go to a court and then prove to the court that you're not a danger to yourself or to other people. It is completely turning the whole concept of due process on its head. In this country, the country that I believe that we live in, you are innocent until you are proven guilty, not with these red flag laws.
So not too long ago, earlier this year, in fact, I had an opportunity to hear about these red flag laws down at uh, Fox 2. And uh, House Representative David Wittenberg, he was pre Robert Wittenberg was present, and he was talking about these red flag laws and about how great they were and how they were going to make people safer. And we weren't going to have any unfortunate incidents and so many lives are going to be saved and it's great and that the courts are involved and there's due process. He completely sold us a bill of goods. It was nothing like he portrayed it to be. And that's what I have really come to learn when you talk to or when you listen to politicians when they talk about proposed legislation. Do not take them at their word that the laws that they're proposing mean exactly what they say. Take the time to actually pull up your favorite internet browser of choice. Go to the internet and look this stuff up. Read the bill for yourself, word for word, and make sure that they're actually selling you exactly what exists. Another issue with these red flag laws, and this is the thing that really burns me, the person who's levying the accusations against you, the person who is saying that you're a danger to yourself or other people, there's virtually no consequences for filing a false report. Someone could literally have an ax to grind. Someone hates your political position on whatever topic that, you, that you're most passionate about. And they say, well, hey, I'm just going to go to a court, go to a judge and tell the most outrageous story and have your guns taken away from you and confiscated. When I asked the good Representative Wittenberg, was there any consequences for individuals who filed false testimonies or false statements against someone, have their gun rights usurped and taken away from them? He said, yeah, yeah, sure, it's in the bill, it's in the bill, go check it out. And I actually read the bill and it said that if someone filed false information information alleging false activities and deeds against you with respect to your gun rights, you may be subject to contempt of court. Now, when you say may, whenever someone tells me may, I always think of the flip side of that. May to me also means may not. So if you may or you may not be subject to contempt of court. Well, contempt of court doesn't sound very damaging to me. I would think if someone lied on me in court and that resulted in a raid and my guns taken away from me, I would want some severe punishment rendered, not just a possible potential maybe sanction. No, I would want something more serious. The other issue is that with respect to these red flag laws, they really do not solve the problem of bad people doing bad things. Unfortunately, we live in a society where there are truly bad and evil people and they will do some most dreadful, awful things to other people. However, the fact that a red flag law legislation may or may not exist on the books, a law is not going to prevent a bad guy who is intent and determined to hurt you from hurting you. Even if you went to that bad guy's home and let's just say his guns were going to hurt you, you can take his guns. He is still going to hurt you. There is something other that must be done to circumvent that determined adversary, someone who is committed to hurting you. And as a firearms expert, as a gun rights authority, as a trainer, I have a couple of suggestions and ideas. If you happen to be in a relationship or getting away from a past relationship from someone who has stated that they have a desire to hurt you, you need to go somewhere safe. Go somewhere safe. 
then I'm going to advocate that you go to the court and under current law that does not violate your due process or the person you're accusing his due process rights, get a regular vanilla garden variety personal protection order, which keeps that person lawfully from coming within so many feet or miles from your residence. Yes, I know. Bad guys don't obey PPOs. That's why I'm also going to recommend that you get a gun, that you buy a gun. And I'm going to recommend that you learn how to use that gun. I'm going to also advocate that you get a concealed pistol license. And because you have a PPO, you can get it on an emergency basis. You go to a court, talk to a judge. A judge will then issue you a, a concealed pistol license, assuming you meet all the other requirements, on the spot, and as long as you get training within the next two days, excuse me, two weeks. Get training in two weeks, and then it becomes permanent. And then if that would be bad guy, if he truly exists, wish to bring death or dishonor or mayhem to your doorstep, you will be empowered to protect yourself. The thing that we really have to keep in mind is that there is never a shortage of individuals who exist in our society who desire to take away our rights, whether it's our rights to speak openly and friendly and whether it's in person or if it's over the Internet, to take away our right to defend ourselves, to take away our right to keep and bear arms and our right to own a gun. It is up to us to fight for those rights each and every day. Please. If you ever hear of anyone advocating emergency risk procedures or these high risk personal protection orders or these red flag laws, just say no. Thank you very much. Have fun. We, we only have the highest quality speakers here at the Campaign for Liberty, as, as you can tell from that. And, and oh my gosh. Uh, the uh, other thing I'm going to say real quickly is, you know, it's funny about the Second. Of course, we always say, if there weren't a Second Amendment, would you have the right to own firearms and to be armed for self-defense? Yeah. Right, of course. It's a natural right, right? So so, so there's that. And, and an interesting thing, if you want to go back and read about this, the Tenth Amendment Center and uh, a lady named Suzanne Sherman and also Carol Jones wrote about this. The part about the militia wasn't that you have to be in the militia to own guns, which is what some of the gun grabbers try to say. The part was we should have militias, state militias, to defend our rights against the feds, you see. And everybody's in the militia, other than, I guess, public officials or whatever was, was their idea. So that's kind of interesting. All right. Well.